I'm Alyssa Hasty, and I'm a professor in the Department of Molecular Physiology and Biophysics. So my research generally is focused on adipose tissue inflammation. We are interested in that because inflammation is known to induce insulin resistance. And there's a strong correlation between obesity and diabetes, and we think that, this, that the immune system may be playing a role in that association. Um, specifically, we're most interested in macrophages. That's a cell type that I've studied all the way from my PhD work um, through now. But oftentimes, our initial hypotheses about macrophages end up taking us to other immune cells as well. So our lab actually studies um, eosinophils and T cells and um, macrophages in our various studies. Um, so we work in mouse models oftentimes, and to create obesity, we give them high-fat diets, so they're um, nice round um, mice, um, and we study their adipose tissue, their fat, and look at the immune cells in the fat under various conditions. And um, some of the tools that we use most often are flow cytometry to identify the immune cells. Um, we also do some in vitro work where we can work with cultured macrophages and adipocytes and look at how various treatments impact their functions individually or their relationship to one another. Earlier, I've studied macrophages even during my PhD, and in that case, I studied it. Studied them in the context of atherosclerotic disease, um, where the immune system was just learning to be um, to play a role in atherosclerotic lesion development. And when I started my own lab in 2003, my initial intention was to study how obesity increases risk of heart disease and hyperlipidemia. And um, shortly after my lab um, was began, um, there were some papers that came out that described the fact that in obese adipose tissue there are more macrophages. And so all of a sudden it kind of clicked for me that studying obesity and diabetes and macrophages would, would really um, be an interesting area for me to get into. So I transitioned over the course of the first few years of my laboratory from atherosclerosis to more diabetes related studies, um, focusing again on the adipose tissue macrophages. Um, in the U.S., over two-thirds of the population are considered to be overweight, and um, half of those are half of those individuals are obese. Um, so one-third of our population are obese, another third are overweight, and only one-third are considered to be normal weight. You know, whenever I lecture to medical students, I tell them, you know, whatever it doesn't matter what specialty you want to go into, the obesity rates are going to impact how you care for your patients and the type of diseases that they present with. So um, obesity increases risk of cancers, of, um, of diabetes, obviously, of heart disease, of many different types of diseases. Well, you know, funding is very important for our research, and um, over the past um, five years in particular, it's become more and more difficult to get funding, especially through the NIH, through the National Institutes of Health. Um, my research um, in particular, I've been um, really fortunate to have funding through junior faculty and mid-career sorts of awards from the American Diabetes Association and the American Heart Association, um, as well as the NIH and also the Veterans Affairs. So. There are a lot of places that we can go to try to get funding, but it is getting more and more difficult. And it ends up taking more and more of our time writing grants to get, to get those funds um, to be able to keep our research going. Um, but it, it is what it is, and we just keep um, persevering and persisting and, um, and ultimately um, having that review process and having our work um, analyzed by other scientists helps us improve our research programs as well. So one of, we, we have several exciting things um, coming out right now. Um, I'll just mention two of them. Well, I'll mention three of them. So one, we um, made a discovery a few years ago that there's a specific population of macrophages in the adipose tissue that seems to handle or recycle iron, the element iron. Um, they have an elevation in iron content within this one um, special subpopulation of macrophages and an upregulation of all of the genes that we've tested that are related to iron handling. So we really want to follow up and determine what these special iron handling macrophages are doing in the adipose tissue. Um, so that's one that we're really excited about. In another study, we were actually um, interested in another um, part of the immune system called complement, and we were studying complement factor 5. And um, 
Contrary to our hypothesis, the complement factor V deficient mice had um, very severe insulin resistance. We had expected them to be protected from insulin resistance. And it turns out that there's some um, sort of um, processing defect in the insulin receptor in those mice. And so we're really interested in determining what this link between the complement system, which is a much more um, basic um, part of the immune system than, for example, the immune cells, like macrophages and T cells and B cells. So how, how and why does complement impact metabolic processes, and in particular the insulin receptors? So that's another one that we're interested in. And then um, a third one that we're interested in right now is actually some, um, we've found that eosinophils um, are highly elevated um, in, under certain circumstances um, and treatments that, we're, that we give the mice. And we're interested in that because ES, in those same models, the eosinophils are elevated in the, the lungs. Um, and there's an association between obesity and allergy and asthma. And despite that known association, there's very little known about how the adipose tissue itself might be playing into that relationship. And so we want to learn um, more about whether the adipose tissue eosinophil population has relevance to allergy and asthma situations. So in most of our work, um, we start out thinking we're going to be studying macrophages and adipose tissue inflammation, and then we end up going in these, these really interesting new directions, which makes the research a lot of fun. For sure, you just never know where you're going to go, and you know, we all have hypotheses that we test, and, and sometimes we're right, but most often we're wrong, and that is actually usually much more interesting um, to, to, to make new discoveries. And you know, some basic science research is, is way, way back from any kind of clinical application, but we have to start somewhere. And and, and a lot of times that research then leads to either our own labs or other labs to making discoveries that bring us closer to translation, to, to coming up with drug discoveries or new therapeutics for human disease. Um, and sometimes you start in the middle and you actually need to go back to basic science in order to determine what some of the mechanisms are for how a disease is developing or how certain cell types contribute to that disease or even how a, a therapeutic is working. And so, you know, there are all of these ranges of the very most basic to the translational to the, the, the clinical are all important for human health. I mentioned the, the discoveries that we're really excited about scientifically, but it's it's critical for um, for those discoveries to be made by people in the laboratory, not by myself. Um, I have graduate students and undergraduate students and postdocs and a research instructor and lab manager, medical students. They all play a role in in helping to make these discoveries. And if it if it wasn't for their hard work and for their observations and for their persistence, we definitely wouldn't make the discoveries that that we have. Um, and so, really, they're the most rewarding part of my work um, is working um, with the people that are in my lab and seeing them go on to these amazing, other amazing careers, being faculty members at other institutions or becoming teachers and building up excitement for science in high school students or undergrad students or um, going into the military and doing research that's related to military work or um, going into industry um, and being involved in drug discovery for immunological diseases. So that's really, in the end, what's the most rewarding is that we can we can start with a, our little nexus in the lab and then over the years these individuals with their training here go out and spread that knowledge and excitement and make many more new discoveries um, beyond what what we could have made um, alone in our laboratory so that's what I find to be the most rewarding part of doing research so I did my undergrad work at Tennessee Tech um, thought I was going to go into nursing and then fell in love with my biology courses that were prerequisites so decided to go to graduate school instead. Um, came to Vanderbilt for my PhD work. Um, postdoctoral work was at Tokyo University in Japan which was a really unique and exciting experience um, and then came back to Vanderbilt and I've been on faculty since 2003. Um, what advice do I have for postdocs and graduate students? So I was a director of graduate studies for many years, so I love working with graduate students and, and trying to advise them. Um, the advice that I would give 
um, is to be persistent and to um, not worry if your hypotheses aren't correct. It's more important that you test them thoroughly and rigorously and it's not our job to um, prove anything about biology but to discover new things about biology and if you can do that and if you're excited by it and if you can um, find yourself working in a lab environment that is enthusiastic and encouraging um, then you can go on to be whatever you want to be. Um, some students want to go on to run their own laboratories in settings like Vanderbilt and that's fantastic but there are many many other career paths that are um, equally important and, and contribute equally to science as a whole and to our society. So just take the time to find what you're interested in and what you love and um, pursue that the best that you can and don't give up. Um, in January, I became the Associate Dean for Faculty Development and Affairs in the Basic Sciences um, in the School of Medicine. So in this role, I have the privilege of working with Dean Larry Marnett. Um, my main role is to um, work with our faculty in terms of their development. I, I consider myself um, a resource for them, and my job is to try to make every single one of our faculty members be as successful as they can be, to, um, to speak on their behalf to the dean when necessary or to their chairs when necessary, to create um, programs that would be of use to them. Um, so I, I really enjoy that aspect of it. And I'm also very fortunate to get to partner with the Associate Dean for Faculty Affairs in the Medical Center. Um, they have developed some tremendous faculty um, training programs also that our faculty members in the basic sciences have access to. Um, so I'm, I'm really fortunate that I'm able to, to team up with them and, and take advantage of the programs that, that they've already established. Um, and help our, our faculty members also be involved in those programs.